Good morning, brethren. I want to talk to you this morning about Jesus. For it is in the knowledge of no other do we find the grace that is the ability to overcome sin, the ability to live uprightly before God, the deliverance from unclean passion and desire. It says in 1 Peter that we grow in grace through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So therefore it is in the revelation of no other person, no other thing, but Jesus. And the truth that Jesus expounds and reveals to our heart that we find freedom from sin, freedom from vanities, freedom from lies. For the nature of a lie is always dehabilitative. It dehabilitates, it paralyzes, it blinds, it brings ignorance, darkness. Truth always is light and life. Truth is always a shield and a buckler. Truth protects us. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, in John chapter 6, he performs a miracle. A whole big multitude of people have been following him and listening to him and seeing the miracles which he has performed. And Jesus tests Philip and says, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? And Philip, in unbelief, said, Oh, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient that every one of them may have a little. Jesus said, tell the people to sit down. Jesus had something else in mind altogether. Now, they had a lad there with five barley loaves and two small fish. You know the account. You know it quite well. And Jesus took those five barley loaves and those two small fish and he gave thanks to the Father and a miracle occurred. A multiplication, uh, I'm sorry, a multiplication. Multiplication of food occurred. God multiplied the fish and the loaves of bread so that there was so much that even 12 baskets of leftovers were taken up. Now, it says in the Bible in John 6 that those men which had seen had been made aware of the miracle that Jesus did. They said among themselves, truly, this is the prophet that is to come into the world. And they talked among themselves and were going to make him king. They were going to take him by force and make him king. But Jesus knew it was not time for that. So he went up to a mountain by himself alone and prayed. And his disciples got into a boat and began to cross over the sea to the other side towards Capernaum. Now, we see that <clears throat> during one of the night watches, there was a heavy storm while they were going over to the other side of the sea. And Jesus walked on the sea and met them about halfway between uh, the halfway mark on, on the lake. Now, Jesus got over to the other side by walking across the sea and then the Bible says immediately the boat was at the lake where the other side of the lake where they intended to go and so they're on the other side now and all these people are looking for Jesus they want to find him again and this is what I want to talk to you about they came and they found Jesus 
teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And they said, Rabbi, when did you come over here? Because they knew he had not left with his disciples. They knew the last time they saw him, he was up on a mountain praying. So to see him over there was kind of perplexing to them. And so when they asked Jesus, Rabbi, when did you come over here? Jesus responded in a way just blunt truth just straight up the truth no pulling punches he just said it how it was and he said to them you seek me not because you saw the signs but because you ate of the loaves and were filled in other words you're you're coming to find me you're seeking me you want to be around me not because of who I am not because of what I say and what I teach but because I have given you earthly things because I have blessed you with carnal things I have fed your belly in abundance even and you have come to see my great ability to turn nothing into something my ability to multiply what little bit you have and in your selfishness you come and seek me because all you care about is earthly things all you care about is carnal things all you care about is feeding your belly and comforting yourself you're stuck in the fleshly realm you're stuck in the earth realm and he said you seek me not because you saw the signs but because you ate of the loaves and were filled and he said this in John 6 verse 27 the next thing he said do not do not labor for the food which perisheth but for the food which endureth to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father hath set his seal upon him now this is a statement that I find to be very very provocative very challenging very contrary to this modern form of Christianity Jesus is telling us plainly do not strive for do not work for do not make your first goal priority objective the things that pass away do not make your first goal your first priority earthly things earthly food you understand he says do not seek these things first do not labor for them do not make them the apple of your eye do not make it the object of your blood sweat and tears but this is exactly what we look around and see in this modern age men strive for labor for work for give their blood sweat and tears their first goal their first objective is the things that pass away I'm not saying that we should and neither is Jesus that we should neglect paying our bills and taking care of these responsibilities that we have to in this modern evil age I get it and so does God but you see our priorities can become really out of whack they can become inside out and reversed and upside down Jesus is saying but labor for the food which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you in other words come and labor for strive for work for the food that I give come labor for the food which produces eternal life which I will give you do you understand this is exactly what Jesus meant when he said in, in Matthew 6 verse 33 and he said don't worry about your life what you eat what you drink nor about your body what you will put on for after all these things the net the, the nations of the world seek after the Gentiles seek after your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things but seek first first and foremost above all else make it your number one goal your number one priority don't put anything else before because nothing else is worthy of being before nothing else is more important if you don't have that part in order everything else will be out of sync 
out of whack and it will be wrong and it will be evil seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you God knows that we need food God knows that we need a vehicle at times you know in, in certain circumstances God knows that we need money to pay bills God knows we need clothes to cover our body. God knows that we need comfort. God knows that we need friendship. God knows what we need. But he's telling us for the sake of our own soul and to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and to labor not, labor not for the food which perisheth, but for the food which endureth unto everlasting life. This food that we're told to strive after, Jesus himself said, I am it. Because they said, fine, the Jews who were listening to Jesus said, okay, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? After Jesus told them to labor for the food which perisheth not. He said, what shall we do then that we may work the works of God? Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he hath sent. Now stop right there and listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he hath sent. You understand, to believe in Jesus, to believe on Jesus is not a passive thing. It is not just a mental agreement with all of his claims and who he is and what he did on the cross, that he was resurrected and ascended to the right hand of God, to not just mentally agree with that and believe it in your head only. Because if you come to believe, you will, but you will obey him. You will follow him. You will do what he says. You will be like that man when he found a pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had so he could have that precious pearl. You will be like that man who went and found a great treasure, buried it in a field, went and sold all that he had just to buy the property that the treasure was buried in. If you come to believe, you will understand that it takes work to protect that belief. You will understand that it takes work to promote that belief and grow that belief, that faith in God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. The carnal mind does not believe God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. So Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has said. Do whatever it takes to believe in me. Do whatever it takes to follow me. Protect your commitment. Do whatever you must do to know me, to follow me, to obey me. Have faith produced in your being. Now you've got to understand, those Jews knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. They knew what he was implying. They knew who he claimed. They understood who he was claiming and making himself out to be. Because the very next verse is fine. What sign will you perform then to show us? What work will you do? that we may see it and believe you. For it is written, Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. It is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. My friends, we have got to have a diet of the words and the spirit of Jesus Christ. We have got to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, you better labor for this bread. You better strive for and work for this bread that I will give unto you. My brothers, only, my brothers and sisters, only if you eat this bread you have peace and joy. Jesus said, whoever comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus gives us his life, his spirit, and gives us peace and joy and victory. See, if you eat a bad diet in the natural, if you're eating junk foods, guess what? You're going to be fat and lazy and, you know, disqualified from performing certain activities because your body is a wreck. If we're not eating right spiritually, if we're not eating the diet of heaven, if we're not eating Jesus, if our priority is not to take care of our soul man, our new man, guess what's going to happen to him? He's going to get fat, lazy, sluggish, get sick, and die. 
No such thing as once saved, always saved, my friends. Once you leave this realm, once your body dies, or you are alive and remain at the coming of Jesus Christ, and you receive your new body and your perfected soul, then you will be saved, and you will always be saved. And But on this side of eternity, my friends, there is work that must be done to maintain the salvation of Jesus Christ in our souls. There is a work that must be done. It's called the works of faith. Jesus said to not labor for earthly things, to not strive for them, to not make them your goal, objective, or priority, but getting the food which I give, make it your priority. In other words, spend time with Jesus, pray to Jesus, read his word, meditate upon his word, and because the eating of his word and the drinking of his spirit will enable you to do his will. That is called grace. Grace comes through faith. Faith causes you to seek after Jesus. His faith causes you to labor for him. And his faith will produce grace. It will produce the substance that gives nutrients to your soul man from eating and drinking his words and drinking his spirit. You understand this. So we need to stop. If we are found right now, if we have been guilty of making earthly things our pleasure and our priority and our objectives and putting God somewhere on the side, we need to stop it and put him first again, or maybe even for the very first time, put him first and stop seeking earthly things. Stop making them your goals and objectives and get rich in the things of God. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich and put on a white raiment that may cover the shame of your nakedness and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Know ye not that the lazy hand, the slack hand, bringeth poverty, but the diligent hand maketh rich. Let us labor in the things of God. God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him. Who love him, in other words, obey him. Oh, brethren, I'm jealous for the things of God, and I pray that you are too. I pray that God would unify his people, that he would unify his people, that he would purify his people and remove from us vanities and lies and unclean desires and make us a people fit for his use in this end time. All those who are not willing to do this will fall off and fall away. Grace and peace unto you, my brethren. May you be found in him, and him in you.